Hey everybody, welcome back to the Bibliophile Report, a list of the books I did read and didn't read, a little book review. I did not post last week and I'm finally able to post this week because I was literally reading one book. One book, just under, just a little over 400 pages, but it was such a meaty book that I just, I, it, that's how long it took me to read it. It was heavy and so thought provoking and so sad. I don't even, I'm gonna try my best to describe it. I don't have the book with me. I had to return it to the library. That seems to be how popular this book is. So I'm gonna pop it right up here so you can take a look at it since I can't hold it. Not really sure what to do with my hands. Usually I have the book, but I'm gonna try to keep them from flying about. The book was called Solitary and it's by Albert Wood Fox. And it's described as a memoir, but why anybody would ever want to remember what happened to this man, I can't even, I can't even say. So I'm more comfortable calling it an autobiography because if I had had to endure this, I wouldn't have wanted it as a memory. Albert Wood Fox spent just over 40 years in solitary confinement in Angola prison. And not entirely in Angola, but mostly in Angola. He did move around a little bit. And he was in prison and in solitary for a crime that he didn't commit. He had been placed in prison uh, back when he was younger for 50 years for armed robbery. And in 1972, a white guard was killed at Angola prison. Albert Wood Fox is African American, and Angola Prison is in Louisiana, the South. And during that time, and unfortunately still today, racism is rampant in that area of the United States. Because of this, Albert Wood Fox and three other people that he was friends with in prison were convicted of this crime, which they did not commit and they were then placed in six by nine cells for over 40 years. This book was incredibly difficult to read as someone who has led a pretty easy life. I, I would say that my life has been incredibly easy and I am incredibly fortunate for everything that I have. And reading this book made me realize what is actually happening out there. And I don't think of myself as this little snowflake sitting here. I am fully aware of what happens in this country and the horrible injustices that some people face, especially now with some of the stuff that is going on. But to allow someone to, to stick someone in a box basically and forget about them for years and not give them due process, which is a right by every single citizen of the United States. I am just at a loss, absolutely at a loss after reading this book. And I think it is important. I think it is something that everyone should read. The only thing that I can say about this book that is any, anywhere negative is that there is so much legal jargon in it because he does go through so many legal processes and so many people assisted him to get him released from prison. And so it, it's very, very heavy in that and it's, it's a slog through those pages. I can see why he wanted to include them to show how unjust he was treated, but it was very, very hard to get through. So paraphrasing some of that would have been better. Uh, there was also so many names mentioned. It was very difficult. It was almost like reading a Stephen King book where he throws a ton of names at you and then it's just one name and then it disappears and you think you need to remember it, but it never appears in the book again. There was a bunch of that as well. And I can see he wants to make sure that he acknowledges everyone that has helped him throughout this journey and also those people that were responsible for what happened to him. That made it very difficult to go through. As someone who was able to read a book like this, I kept on having to put it down and taking a break and going back to it because it was so horrifying. That's the only term that I can really use is I was 
horrified and I was embarrassed to be a citizen of the United States and know that something like that was happening and nobody knew about it. These days the media throws up every injustice and we are really fortunate that they are there to do that for us. But even though this was highly publicized and Am Amnesty International got involved in it, I don't think it was publicized enough because like I said, I'm not a little snowflake and I am not someone who is not on the up and up with things that are happening. I don't remember ever learning about this. I didn't learn about it in school. I don't remember ever seeing it on any form of social media and I don't remember seeing it on the news. So that scares me a little bit to think that there are other people out there that this has happened to. It is amazing to think that this book is probably going to be made into a movie. I know that there are some deals happening. The book was released in March of 2019 and they are in talks right now into making this into a movie, which I think will bring the story to more people. I will not see this movie. It was heartbreaking enough to just read the book and know that this man went through this and came out the other side, this absolutely pure human being. He is not above saying that he hasn't done wrong in his life and he hasn't treated people unkindly, but he is talking about over the past 40 years of being incarcerated, what that has done to him and how it has shaped him as a human being. There's a really cool quote in the book. It is not Albert Wood Fox's. It is a Mexican proverb that I think that everybody should really think about in terms of how they deal with a terrible situation and how they come through it. And the proverb is, they tried to bury us. They did not know that we were seeds. And I'm gonna leave you with that. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week. It'll be a livelier one. It will be a happier one. But my message to you is read this book. It is horrifyingly unbelievable that this happened.